Welcome to City This Week. I'm Mary Lee. It's good to have you with us. Coming up in this week's top stories, China City volunteers across the country hold several winter aid distributions to help the less fortunate. City volunteers in Guizhou Province catch up with residents of Pingyan New Village, the seventh Da'ai village city built. And we meet a newly certified city volunteer who gave up his bad habits in selling meat to embrace a life in line with city's ideals. To help the less fortunate in China brave the cold winter days ahead, city volunteers across the country carried out aid distributions to give people in need relief items and emotional support. Recently, in Guangxi's Nanning City, volunteers from Guangdong, Guangxi, Hong Kong, and Taiwan organized distributions to help around 3,000 residents. Meanwhile, in Fujian Province's Zhangzhou City, local volunteers delivered supplies to care recipients' doorsteps and discovered several moving stories during the home visitation. <laughs> Holding the hands of city volunteers, Grandma Chen Lai in its own smiles, living in a rundown house filled with recyclable items, the 78-year-old grandma cannot enjoy comfortable retired years. Enjoying the volunteers' company, the senior's loneliness disappears. Here in Fujian's Zhangzhou city, Xiangcheng is the second smallest district among the 11 districts, but has the fourth highest population. There are quite a few low-income households living in this region. To help, city volunteers decided to go door to door to offer local residents relief supplies. At Yang Yan Yi's home, city volunteers see a young girl who has become the pillar of support for her family, as her mother has been bedridden for four years. I want to thank my mom. Without her, I won't be here today. Yang is an adopted child, and her foster family's love and care has made her determined to keep the family rolling. When she was six, she did farming work to support the family financially, and now she looks after her mom when at home. I will make my family strong again. Seeing how sedent Yang Yan Yi is, city volunteer Chen Yuzhi shares her life story to encourage the youngster. You know what? I am also an adopted child. My biological parents wanted a son, so they sent me away after I was born. <laughs> Using herself as an example, Chen Yuzi wants the girl to understand that difficulties in life only makes one stronger. I also want to make contributions to help those in greater need. I want to reciprocate society's help, but first I need to be filial to my parents. <laughs> Throughout the winter, city volunteers are on hand to bring aid supplies and emotional support to senior residents in Guangxi. As we carried out our initial survey in the first year, I was shocked to learn that there exists such poverty near Nanning City. Over the years, city has periodically organized winter aid distributions to help residents in Long'an town, with the number of households receiving aid increasing from 700 to 1,000. Volunteers from Guangdong, Guangxi, Hong Kong and Taiwan have worked in teams to make such events possible. We need to pick up the pace because there are so many bags of rice to distribute. They haven't eaten anything yet, so we need to hurry up. Go, go, go. We must do our best to help out. What a blessing to be able to help those in need. To make sure each household receives a bag of rice, volunteers carry bag after bag. Seeing how happy they are upon receiving the rice, we feel happy for them too. Everybody is happy. I don't feel tired at all. We're just giving a little of our time. 
Inspired by Tzu's kindness, some youngsters arrive to help out. I am on a business trip here, so I came to help out. I want to start the new year in a meaningful way. The volunteers' sincere care and dedication has made the event one full of happiness and compassion. In the days of winter, we use our smiles to beat back the cold and bring warmth to their hearts. Staying in China, to usher in the new year on January 4th and 5th, Tsuji volunteers in various provinces organize blessing ceremonies. Let's see how Tsuji volunteers in Guangxi, Nanjing, and Sichuan celebrated the occasion with local residents as they bid farewell to the past year with a heart of gratitude and embrace the joys of the new year. Recycling volunteer Xiang De Lan shares her recycling experiences open-heartedly on stage. Sitting among the audience is her daughter and son-in-law who couldn't be prouder. She has become happier through doing Ziji work, so we should give her our full support. She has been able to remain committed for two years without any rest. I really admire that spirit. When Xiang retired, she left Chongqing to live with her daughter in Chengdu. Her day spent doing Tsuji has allowed her to surpass each day in fulfillment, especially with the support of her family. I'm content and joyous as I can feel their support. Meanwhile, Dai Technology staff and their family members are too celebrating the year end at the Tsuji Luoshui Service Center. Participants cherish the blessing and wisdom red envelopes, knowing that they come all the way from Taiwan. This love originates from Taiwan and is spread across the world. This is the sixth consecutive year Tsuji volunteers have organized a year-end blessing ceremony here in Nanjing. Attending the event are former Tsuji care recipients who remain grateful till this day for Tsuji's love. When I was ill, I didn't want to think of myself as a sick person. I lived like a normal, healthy person, and this kept me motivated when doing Tsuji work. I didn't feel tired at all. Inspired by Tsuji, Fan Xiping took the initiative to place Tsuji Jing's aphorism collections in his hotel rooms. In the beginning, my intentions were simple. All I wanted to do is inspire more people to give. While they take care of themselves, they can also reach out and do something for others. I suppose this coincides with the spirit of Tsuji as well. <laughs> It's nice to have such blessings to start off the year. Initially, our kids were reluctant to attend, but once they got here, they were happy to be here. The red envelopes in hand are a form of blessing, but they can also be said to be the origin of compassion. Although I'm not wearing the Tsuji uniform yet, however, my heart has long been in Tsuji. My son and husband all joined because of her, so I am very grateful to her. Tsuji volunteer Lu Lingjing actively takes part in community events and also invites members of her neighborhood to visit seniors in nursing homes. While doing good deeds, the relationships between communities are brought one step closer. More on our reports of year and blessing ceremonies throughout various regions in China. In Hangzhou City of Zhejiang Province, volunteers held their blessing ceremony at the Red Star Cultural Hotel, thanks to the CEO of Red Star Cultural, who kindly provided the venue. While in Shanghai, Tsuji's year and activity drew a crowd of nearly 3,000 people in three days. Here at Shanghai's Year and Blessing Ceremony, volunteers put on a play based on the life story of their fellow volunteer Wu Zhen Qingni, who was abandoned by her mother at a young age. We should do more good deeds because doing good deeds and fulfilling our filial duties cannot wait. 
Coming across Tzu was a turning point in this grandma's life. Today, at 85, she's like a mother to all the Shanghai Tzu volunteers. This is our first time listening to Mama Wu's life story. And what truly inspired me was that she wants to devote the rest of her life to Tzu I was a very unlucky woman. I once thought about ending my life and disappearing from the world because I was not loved by anyone. Another life story presented on stage is that of volunteer Wang Gendis, whose heart was once filled with hatred when her husband betrayed her and her son was in jail. Seeing how these grandmas and grandpas truly need our company and how they smile every time we visit, I am overjoyed as well. With a change in perspective, Wang's life became somewhat different as well. The master says, where there's a will, there's a way. Even my wife couldn't believe that I quit smoking after 30 years. The seven blessing ceremonies held over three days drew a crowd of nearly 3,000 participants. Behind the scenes, 200 city volunteers were mobilized to ensure the events went smoothly. Harmony comes first, so we must form good affinities with others before doing good deeds. As one of the most bustling cities in China, volunteers here in Shanghai hope to provide participants with the wisdom and blessing to begin the year ahead right. The city of Hangzhou in Zhejiang province is known to many as paradise, as it not only offers a temperate climate, but also a variety of magnificent scenery. Besides, the lake is where many hotels are located, and among them is the Red Star Cultural Hotel. Inside each room, one will find a Jingsi Aphorism volume by the bedside. In addition, a Jingsi bookstore was also established here last May, bringing Tzu humanitarian spirits to the hotel. Tzu is holding its year and blessing ceremony for the third year here at the Red Star Theatre, thanks to the CEO of the hotel, who happily provided the venue. The wife of the CEO, Zhao Junjun, also devoted herself to organizing the year-end event and even took part in the sign language performance. Her son was also on hand as a volunteer. Before, my mom used to get angry easily when things went different from planned. Later, after she joined Tzu she became a more soft-spoken person. Every member of my family feels that she has become the family's most filial member. Thanks to the day's event, over 1,000 city volunteers and Hangzhou residents are reminded of the importance of seizing the opportunity to do good deeds and carrying out filial duties. One of city's ongoing efforts is in environmental protection, and a major part of that is in promoting recycling work to all corners of the world. In China, city volunteer Huang Xueyun was the first to promote recycling in Lanxi of Zhejiang province. Later, Lanxi No. 3 High School even provided a venue which allowed recycling work to flourish here, successfully inspiring many local residents. Tzu recycling effort is flourishing here in Lanxi of Zhejiang province thanks to Tzu volunteer Huang Xueyun from Yiwu. This is something we can't buy with money. I am truly delighted. Even the principal and teachers have joined us. I hope to inspire more and more people to join our ranks. Lanxi No. 3 High School also played a vital role in the establishment of the local recycling station. The principal told us the school has many vacant buildings and to pick whatever we want. After looking around, we decided to settle on this house. The school even provided a three-story building to Tziji to use as an office. As living conditions continue to improve, people will look to enrich the spiritual aspect of their lives too. I think China's recycling work will blossom one day. I was already renting this room before our office was established, so we can collect all the recyclables. Thanks to the effort of many, Tzu recycling work in Lanxi will no doubt shine bright and clear.
after Cixi volunteers completed their winter aid distributions in Guizhou province, they planned a series of home visitations to catch up with old friends. Among their visits was one to Pingyan New Village, the seventh Da'ai village built by Cixi in the province, as well as Wanxin Village. Here in Guizhou, Cixi volunteer Gao Mingshan shows the way around Pingyan New Village, the seventh Da'ai village built by Cixi. The mountain over there is where Wanxin Village is located. We moved 62 families from there to the Dai village here in Wanxin. They still live in thatched houses and with farm animals nearby. The residents of Pingyan New Village warmly welcome the Cixi volunteers, as residents here have come to see Cixi as part of their family. Later, during their visit to Wanxin, volunteers visit a senior who lives in a house made of straw and wooden boards. Living alone, 88-year-old senior Wang makes do with simple meals such as eggs and noodles. In the senior's home, volunteers are shocked to see a coffin. Grandpa Wang says it's a tradition in these parts to prepare one's final resting place. At another house in Wanxing Village, the pigsty is but a stone's throw away. Living in such proximity to livestock is a common occurrence in these parts. On the day of the volunteers' visit, a nearby family is celebrating the completion of their new house. <laughs> Content with the hand they are dealt with in life, these villagers work hard to build a life of their own. Even if they are not well off, their determination to not rely on outside help is commendable. Luodian County Shangongjing Village is the eighth Dai village established by Cixi in Guizhou Province. Since its establishment in 2007, volunteers will pay villagers a visit during winter aid distributions where everyone has a chance to catch up. On their most recent visit, Cixi volunteers noted that the villagers were happier and filled with gratitude at the help they've received. Seeing Cixi volunteers come calling, Shang Wangjing villagers light fireworks to celebrate their arrival. As it's nearing Lunar New Year, many young villagers who work out of town have returned on this day to celebrate the occasion. Volunteers throw vegetables that the villagers grew themselves into a big walk. And this year, Cixi's instant rice also makes an appearance. I brought Cixi's instant rice. I learned about it from that Cixi sister from the Philippines. Some other volunteers brought local dishes from Dongguan as well. It's great having Cixi volunteers here because our houses were repaired by them. <laughs> Xiangwangjing <laughs> Village is the eighth Dai village that Cixi established in Guizhou in 2007. Cixi volunteers helped to relocate villagers from remote areas to this more convenient location. Now with sturdy housing, easy access to transportation, these villagers' lives have taken a turn for the better. My income has increased when compared to before. I have a shop now. I have a car rental shop with eight cars. Xiangwangjing villagers are diligent by nature. Those who stayed behind continue to farm their land, and those who sought jobs out of town work to make ends meet. Although they might not be economically well off, nonetheless, these villagers live life to the fullest and enjoy every moment of it. 
heading to Taiwan at the Year and Blessing Ceremony and Volunteer Certification event in Taoyuan. Among the newly certified volunteers was Li Mingdi, who used to sell fried chicken for a living. Inspired by another volunteer, Li decided to not only get rid of his bad habits, but also start selling vegetarian food instead. Here's his story. cold weather, city volunteer Li Mingdi gets up before dawn to begin work. Though selling vegetarian food doesn't make as much as selling fried chicken, Li is content with what he has. The master often reminds us to be content, grateful, understanding and forgiving. If we are not content, regardless of how much we earn, we will never be satisfied. Even if we don't make a lot of money, if we are content, we will be happy. It was after participating in his sutra study group that Lee finally realized it was time to change and get rid of his bad habits. Every time we read the ten precepts, he would be quite embarrassed, so he decided he would put all his bad habits. Zhuang Shuju is the volunteer that guided Lee on the city path, as she herself once struggled to end her beetle nut business. My ex-husband passed away from oral cancer. Though I am a vegetarian, it was as if I was holding a knife in one hand and wearing a Buddhist bracelet on the other. It felt like I was harming others indirectly. In his spare time, Li Mingdi practices sign language whenever he can and always tries to form good affinity with his customers by sharing city's ideals. Continuing in Taiwan's Taoyuan, Ciji Care recipient Mr. Chen was left paralyzed from his waist down due to a workplace accident. Despite living on government subsidies, he barely makes ends meet and is unable to afford his medical expenses. However, with Ciji volunteers' help, Mr. Chen's life has changed for the better. Recently, volunteers brought him a new bed and also helped him clean up his home. Volunteers first load the nursing bed onto a truck before transporting it to a city care recipient's home. When we first came, we found the care recipients to be very optimistic and outgoing. He never complains about his situation. Sixteen years ago, a workplace accident left Mr. Chen paralyzed from his waist down, leaving him in despair. I fell and snapped my spine. I was a framework worker. During the first year after the accident, I desperately wanted to commit suicide. Then I started making some handicrafts, but still rarely went out. From strangers to friends, volunteers spent a long time to win Mr. Chen's trust. On their latest visit, they brought him a new bed and helped him clean up his home. His neighbors and friends often come to care for him. He said that he is grateful for the Ciji brothers and sisters' constant care and emotional support. Regardless of the losses in his life, Mr. Chen is replenished daily with Ciji's love and care. At the end of today's show, we turned our camera to the United States and followed Sitchings on their visit to senior homes. Sitchings in Detroit, Michigan help seniors learn English, while those in Columbus, Ohio celebrate the New Year holidays with some elderly. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching. See you next week.